In the next few minutes, you'll learn why you can't find the short circuits, and I'm not talking about the ones on main lines, which are easy, but on all the others. You'll understand the behavior of an iPhone with the power supply. You'll learn with tests how shorts are reflected in areas other than the shorts, and you'll see clearly that some things that are said about low or secondary consumptions and their reading with the power supply are nothing more than a myth. With complicated faults and shorts, it's probably the case that you use the power supply and look at readings like these frozen consumption, or consumptions that go up and down and do the same thing again, and you do not find the fault. There are also faults where you find heat in the PMU, and the PMU does not actually have a short. Before we start, we need to quickly define PMU LDO box and VDD boost line. PMU is a voltage manager. It receives voltage and converts it to different voltages as needed by each function of the iPhone. For example, when it receives 4 volts from the battery, it distributes 2.85 volts to the camera because that's what it needs. It's like a heart pumping blood through the veins that goes to different places. Not all the organs need the same amount of blood. On the other hand, a VDD main output is a main line that works with 5 volts, like a main vein. A VDD boost line is another main line used to increase the voltage. An LDO is a line that lowers the voltage and allows this voltage to be constant and stable. And the buck is a voltage reducer. These LDO and buck voltages are present at device power up. As it starts up, they appear one by one. The LDOs, the bucks, until the whole phone is powered. Once defined, let's talk about a mid, and then we'll do the test one by one. They say that this diagram is an indicator of the amps consumed by each line, which is true. But that at power up, these amps are cumulative. It means that, for example, the phone freezes on the power supply at 1000 mAh. It's because it's consumed the amperages of each line. Amperages that have activated each one of these lines, and by staying frozen, the consumption must be added, and consequently the fault or short circuit will be present where the result of the sum of the consumption of the lines compared to the 1000 mAh of the source. So, according to this theory, it would be easy to know where the short is according to the frozen consumption. So with that said, we will cut the LDO output lines and the buck lines of the PMU to see how it behaves with each short and we'll learn a few things. First, we turn on with the power supply an iPhone motherboard without failures to see how it turns on normally. 50 MA, 100, 200, down to 100, up to 200, down to 100, up to 300. Then there are lower peaks consumptions such as 600, 300, and it will be reduced until it's at rest, zero amps, and a heat measured with a thermal camera that can go from 30 degrees to 40 in the PMU, rising progressively as the board is turning on different functions. The adjustable power supply, the thermal camera, and other parts and tools can be found at fourphones.eu. So we can summarize four LDO lines to highlight the main points of the study. One, 50MA LDO1 line that corresponds to the PP3V3 underscore USB line in the C2901, and we observe an apparently normal consumption and ignition, and a minimum heating to 50 degrees, and that it heats this area of the PMU. We note that it does not heat the short capacitor, but heats the PMU in this area that corresponds to the cut line. And thanks to the schematic diagrams, we can locate which line corresponds to the short. Two, so we short the 60MA LD04 line that corresponds to the PP0V8AOP line in the C1750 and observe a consumption of 150 mAh and falls to 0 mAh and pulses 20 degrees and 22 degrees that heats this area of the PMU. We note that it does not heat the short capacitor but it heats the PMU in this area which corresponds to the cut line and we can also locate it thanks to the schematic diagram. 3. Now we short the 1000 mA LD05 line that corresponds to the PP3VO NAND line on the C2650 and we can see a 2000 mAh consumption without turning on and that it heats the shorted capacitor at 190 degrees. 4. Then we short the 250 mA LD06 line corresponding to the PPACC VAR line on the C2906 and we observe an unusual consumption rate. It goes up and down and heats the PMU but the hot zone has nothing to do with the shorted line. From here we can already conclude several things before moving on to the study of the buck line. 1. Some of the shorts in the LDO do not freeze the consumption. More than that, they're not even noticed in the ignition. In other words, the ignition is apparently normal. 2. Other consumptions make pulsations. The interesting thing is that many, in fact most of the shorts on the LDO lines are reflected in the PMU. But for 
unfortunately, most of them locate the heat at the point of the tilted line. That's why it's good to have a good thermal camera that measures accurately so you can look at the lines nearby and search for the shorts there. This way you can find the shorts more easily. Three, in the case of other shorts, heat directly the one responsible for the short and there's no major difficulty to solve the fault. We love that the high consumption line, the LD05 of 1000 MA, according to the schematic diagram, consumes in power supply all the amperage and heats to 190 degrees the short, which is fascinating because if there is a very high consumption, we can look directly to the lines of higher amperage to find more easily the shorts. Now we're going to study the buck line. So we short the buck line that corresponds to the buck 10 LXO line in the C2801 and we can observe strange consumption patterns. It goes up and down from 240 MAH and falls to 0 MAH and so on and heats the PMU at 45 degrees in the related area. So we short the buck line which corresponds to the buck 0 LXO line on the C2704 and it turns itself on and stays at 140 MAH and there is nothing to heat. We also short the buck line corresponding to the buck 11 underscore LXO line in the C2810 and it makes an irregular consumption and there's nothing to heat. As can be seen from the study of the buck lines, depending on where the short or where the fault of the behavior can vary. Sudden amperages changes, in other cases it turns on by itself and in some cases there is unusual or no irregular heat despite the short and that the lines are with high amperage. So it seems it's more complicated to find shorts due to heat emission on these lines. We're not going to study the cut VDD main line as they are the easiest because the short appears as soon as we give current output to the source. In the case of the PP VDD underscore boost line on capacitor C3110, power consumption of the source is at 50 MA and it's stopped and the board is totally cold at 20 degrees with no activity. The VDD boost line is the one that appears very early on in the power up which tells us that the PMU is not even receiving secondary voltage and therefore does not heat up. These are clues that help us to know where a fault or short may be located. You've seen in this video why it's said that not everything that heats up is a short. You see that sometimes yes and sometimes no. But it's true that the PMU zone reference can help you to identify the cut line. You've also seen that the LDO consumptions do not always stall consumption. So unlike what the myth claims, the consumption at power up are not cumulative. They do not add up. The independent consumption of each line appears after feeding and it disappears in order to activate the next line with its own consumption. We've learned that shorts behave differently. The amperage rises and falls, it stalls, the consumption increases more than it should and obviously these behaviors in the power supply are not always due to short. It can be due to other faults. 